the next talk will be about Python Robotics for Education by Mr. Max Ong. Max is currently a final year grad undergraduate in computer computing science from University of Glasgow and Singapore Institute of Technology. He works as a curriculum development specialist at Smart Nation Coding Academy focusing on CS education both for students and teachers. He works with primary and secondary schools using Raspberry Pi in a pilot MOE IDA program called Code for Fun. Um, okay, before that, there's someone missing their wallet. So if yeah. anyone you left a wallet in this room in before lunch, go to the front desk, reception, you find your wallet there. Okay? Thank you. Okay. So before I start, uh, how many of you are teachers over here? One. That's all? Okay. So I'll try okay. So uh, make it make it as easy as possible. Uh. So basically right, um I'll be presenting you all on this so called Raspberry Pi robot. And uh, before I start I need to thank um, SNC, uh, Smart Nation Coding Academy and the uh, team, actually they are behind, um, to yeah, help, me, help me in the codes and stuff. And also uh, being here. Lah. So, okay. so Python, uh, Python Robotics for Education, right? Okay, so, uh, this is just a short bio about me. Okay. So first thing, um, why do you all prefer robots to teach computer programming? Any questions? Why? Fun. <laughs> ah, yeah, the slides here. <laughs> okay, so basically, right, as any three points, I think is quite useful. First thing is nowadays children is actually they're very active, so they need something uh physical or something that is quite flashy or quite fun uh, to make it fun. Because as conventional things, when we when we're adults or we are learning in secondary school in poly, we actually see the computer and we program in Python, in Java, and any other things. So, but in the new generation or the current generation. Of students that we taught in Smart Nation Coding Academy is actually quite. Um, you want to have fun. You want to learn, but you mustn't make it boring enough. Okay, it's a bit boring. Programming Python, but you do tr we need to try to make it as fun as possible through example robots, Minecraft, and various other things. So these are actually some of it. And second part is actually programming concepts. You ask them how to do for loop. Uh, how I don't know. So you can teach them using robots, right? Can you teach them how to use for loops and various programming concepts that they may not learn in actual things? Thirdly, it's as I say, a medium using a robot as a medium to learn computer programming. Cause kids at the end of the day, they still need to have fun. They still want to learn, and you, in order to expose them to learn computer programming, and probably in the future, being becoming a soft, software engineer. So it's actually very important for them to actually do it. So learning and exposing them using these kind of medias like robots, Minecraft, and various other like UAVs and stuff. So it's really very important to teach them. Yeah. 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 Oh. So these are actually some of the more popular choice in education. Um, for educators, I believe Lego Mindstorm is quite, quite common among MOE students, um, or MOE staff. So they are actually a lot of them uh, in education in primary school or secondary school level. They will constantly will ask for Lego Mindstorms. So it's actually quite close source actually. And sometimes they are not able to so called uh, progress to actual programming language. At, have you all heard MIT Scratch programming, a visual based programming? So it's actually it's very difficult for them to progress on after the thing. What's all? How to learn? How to how do I do it? So. That's where actually we have those kind of robots that you all see. Um, the more cute one or the more fun or people, uh, children may be interested in actually are uh, those few that means the one that's a ball over there. It's actually a uh, BB-8 in Star Wars. That one called Dash. It's very fun, very fun. And most of our, uh, most of our students that are younger are uh, very interested in playing and when they see it, they're oh, I want to play with it. How to learn how to So this is how we attract them to be exposed to learn computer programming using these kind of things. Despite it's a bit uh, difficult to uh, program actually, but if you make it simple, make it fun, it's actually quite useful. And they, sooner or later they may consider learning pro computer programming. Yeah. yeah. So as I said, visual based programming. 
So base, visual based programming, the most common and most popular one is called Scratch. It's actually a drag and drop based uh, created by MIT. And most MOE teachers are actually taught to use Scratch programming to teach or to expose children in this kind of thing. About most of my, our clients that we actually met, right? Most of them actually you say, oh, Scratch. But Scratch is only up to a standard, up to a level. It's totally remove everything, um, the difficulty of typing. That's a good thing, especially at a younger age. But if you are like 11, 12, 13, or teenager, or going to going to progress on, how? So this is actually it's not it's not that good, especially if you want to learn the actual programming language. But it is a very good thing to actually to teach them computer programming concepts like for loops, variables, those kind of thing. Those are actually quite useful using using this thing. And also you can actually see the creativity using Scratch programming. And yeah, that you cannot express in actual programming language. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next will be text base. Text base, you all have the okay, text base, right? For us, we actually we use uh, say we use mediums like Minecraft, like Raspberry Pis, like robots, and even add on bots will actually teach them Cormier programming because it's actually make it easier for them to learn this kind of thing. Yeah, so these are actually what I'll be presenting to you all on the robotics portion. So basically, my my Raspberry Pi over here, over here, I don't know where it is. Okay, over here, right, will be my client. And we'll go through a local network, a wireless network. And my robot will be playing around here. I'll be controlling. And also, I'll just uh, letting it to do some basic um, sensing and avoidance portion for this. Uh, yeah. So the first part uh, will be remote controlling. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think you cannot see. Never mind. Okay. Okay. So I just show it to you. All. So. <coughs> uh, Basically, right, if you look at this, right, it's actually I'm actually running my client program actually over here to actually control this server, this so called a server or robot. So, actually, you can actually, um, so called, I can move it. Okay, okay wait, uh. Yeah, so there's some problem, some technical problem. So basically, right, um, I'm supposed to actually control it to move around with it and using my laptop to control it, using a Raspberry Pi as a client to access it and actually control it directly. But it seems there's some problems with it. So I'll just move on and show you the other one. Actually, it's, it's actually done by my team. 
John and uh, our interns from SNCA. So basically, right, to just a basic basic Python code, right, actually you can actually make it to run, um, to run around, to follow line, and actually I can show it to you. Yeah. 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 So basically, the whole code, right, is actually there's some obstacle avoidance portion also. So it's the same thing. Yeah. So it's just a very basic like, Python code. And actually, you can use it like so called. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it before turtle program in Python. So it's similar to that, and it's actually quite easy for people or for any student to actually use it. So, uh, okay. So basically, right, this is actually the Python code just now to follow, and also there's some uh, so called sensing using ultrasonic sensor at the top, the front, and also some sensing portion and line sensor at the bottom over here. So you see, right, it's actually quite quite easy, uh, Basically, it's just you're in, over here, you're importing all the various uh, modules or libraries. The rpy.gpl is actually the GPL pin uh, for Raspberry Pi to actually to conduct um, to do basic interaction with sensors and various other things. This can be used for a lot of things. So this is a standard library in Raspberry Pi. And the set mode is actually the pin settings. And okay, 20, 26, 24, 19, and 21 is actually basically the pin numbers to actually to interact with the Raspberry Pi. And line left, line right, and in front is basically the line sensors at the bottom over here. These two and this two. Yeah. Yeah. So and let me see. Yeah. This uh PWM is actually um how you play around with the so called power some pulse yeah. Wave. yeah pulse wave modulation is basically it's just playing around with the power the the power on how how fast and how how fast is it uh, basically. Yeah. And left and right is this this so called this portion, this function, right? It's actually the left left wheel over here and the right wheel. So if you as if you just build basic um, functions for it and ask the child to go and do it, so say I want them to move forward, move backward, move left, move right. It's basically possible because if you see this way, the speed is basically how you go and play around how fast you can move it forward or move it backward. Yeah. So it's basically quite simple if you see the code. Yeah. So left is black, it's self-explanatory. If your left side for your line sensor if detects anything that is black color. And also and not and the right side is also not black color, you keep moving forward. So and so forth. Lah. So we can actually play around with the thing. So it's, if you see it properly, it's actually basically something similar like Toto. And actually can play around with using just this. So if you with 
with the correct functions and stuff, you can actually, can actually do this very simply. And this is so-called our slight, slightly older older version of the thing, right? The older, version. older version for the GPIO, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is actually the older version. So we are using slightly older one, but the new one, one right, is much more easier to actually program for a normal child to actually do it. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically how it will looks like. Yeah. Okay, so special mention, yeah, yeah. So this is just for education. This may you may think is for kids or very simple, but actually, actually, uh, in for by MIT, it's called Ducky Cow. Actually, you can conduct um, research on doing machine learning and stuff using just something like this, yeah. So this is is actually can be used or uh, can be customized to not just for children, or you can actually use it for robotics competition also. And it's actually run using Python and various other things. Yeah. To do image processing and various other things. Yeah. This one is called Ducky Cow. <coughs> There's a few more online. Yeah. This one is it, the so called Spiro. Yeah, this actually is used in to teach computer programming also in the in the primary school level also. And it's quite popular in the States also. And it's they're popular for the BB eight robots. Yeah. So it's very easy, they make it very easy to actually play around with it. Yeah. And sometimes they also have two various oh yeah. Ah. <coughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, the other one it's yeah. Make Wonder. Yeah, so I uh, see it, there's something that's called the blue color robot called Make Wonder. So that, that robot uh, is actually is the same thing as Spiro. It's also quite fun and we use that to teach younger children and also sometimes to attract them to learn computer programming. Yeah. And they are very interested in learning how to play around with it. Just to play but with it they actually give them a like, so called interest to start learning basic programming using it. Yeah. And basically that's the end of my slides. Yeah, for it. So, any questions regarding on it? Any question? No. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, and then. Can ask me anything like related to yeah. Okay, uh, if you don't have the hardware on hand, right? We will recommend to uh, what type of hardware you're meaning actually. Mm -hmm. To teach them comp uh, to teach them Python programming or just the visual one. Yeah, okay, if actually you just want to teach them programming, you actually you can actually download um, Python, Python uh, the Python library or Python uh, program uh, to download it. Actually, you can actually code it. There's actually something that's called Turtle in the library, standard library. So it's similar to this thing. So it actually, we also use it to teach our, our kids, our students on it actually, to teach them computer programming. If, even if you do not have a software, uh, you do not have a hardware. <coughs> yeah. So did I answer your question properly? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. I think yeah. we Maybe believe we have a question. Uh. So if you want to do uh programming maybe uh, outcomes for them to see physically, right? Uh, the whole purpose of using hardware is so that they can uh, visually see uh, physical outcomes. But if you don't have hardware, uh, you still can download Python and 
you can use either Turtle or Pi Game. These are graphic user interfaces which you can develop a program on. And uh, you can build a wrapper library around it with uh, a few distinct commands that, let's say, uh, move forward or move left or turn on the light, turn off the lights, uh, which you have a lot already online. Uh, if you go to code.org or uh, Hour of Code, all those. Um, there are a lot of simulations or emulators that uh, allow you to, let's say, uh, move forward, move left, move right, um, turn left, turn right, to navigate through a maze. So you see actually like a character moving through a maze. So there's a little bit of emula uh, simulation over there already. Um, the purpose of pushing the hardware is uh, so they get more hands-on, they get a few of the electronics as well. Um, Raspberry Pi itself isn't very expensive. Uh, one Raspberry Pi will cost about Thirty-five dollars, right? Um, and then the LEDs, resistors, you can go synthetic power to get very cheaply. Yeah. Oh, in terms of logistics-wise, normally, right? Uh, because we actually have some the, those small cables, right? Actually, we just is able to plug. It's not, uh, it's not purely electronics that maybe you need to solder it on, but it actually just is normally what, what you learn and the jumper wires kind of thing. So it's actually it's quite okay, and if you lose it, then it's quite, e quite easy to be replaced because it's quite cheap actually to buy just the jumper wire kind of thing. It, that one that doesn't, I think, it's similar to this kind of thing. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah too small. Okay, I can show you. Yeah. questions Uh, it's actually um, basically right. If if you teach computer programming right, you actually you actually teach them in terms of problem solving skills that actually you won't learn it in school. Basically, because in school we actually taught to actually have a an a problem and an answer. But in if you learn computer programming, one problem you have multiple solutions. Say for example, social networking, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Those are actually social networking, but it's actually different. They're the same problem to solve the so same problem, but it's actually different in terms of implementation. So it's actually, you can think differently. And lastly, as computer programmers, you will constantly learn and constantly improve a software, a hardware. Yeah, that's the thing that I believe everyone wants it, yeah, for their child, to constantly improve, constantly uh, produce something that's better than what is currently have in the world.